Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. Okay, we will continue uh, what we did the last time. Uh, if I remember well, the last time we started the study of the CU, the control unit. Um, we practically talked about uh, uh, the first two bits. They are responsible for the control of the data bus. We use what we call a decoder 2-4. Uh, just a moment. Uh, did you check the, uh, the course of, uh, of uh, sequential circuits? Yes. Uh, now you know what is, uh, what, what is, uh, what is the clock. Yes, uh, I think yeah, I understand. Okay, okay, we have the clock, and uh, we have uh, we will see that later. The, the you know what is the decoder, what is the multiplexer, and uh, maybe maybe we will uh, try to understand how uh, how we call in the sequential circuit a shifter, a shifter in the sequential uh, circuit. Did you see it in the course? Yes, shifter. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we studied also the three bits of the uh, operation of the, the, the opcode. The I will show you. Okay, those bits, those first three bits, bit seven, bit six, and bit five. They represent the instruction. The instruction, the code of the instruction, okay? And we saw that each instruction uh, for the, for, uh, the, to decode the instruction we will use a decoder, 3.8, and this decoder will activate one line for each instruction. It was very easy. And we started the understanding of the three bytes in the middle. If you remember, I will uh, try to, to use uh, a black board or a white board here. Okay, we study it. Uh, three bits of uh, operation. Three bits of... I don't remember the... Uh, okay, excuse me. I need to check the uh, orientation. Okay, what do we have? How? Uh, uh, okay, this way. The op bits are in the, are the last bits. The last bits, we have the op operation bits here. We have uh, three bits in the middle, and we have uh, two bits here. We have uh, two bits here. Like this, those bits. Uh, uh, the data bus, data bus access, they are used for the data bus access, and the three of the middle, uh, we said that they are contextual. They are contextual, that means it depends on which instruction we are using. If uh, it's uh, uh, BCC instruction, the those uh, three, three bits becomes the condition, and if uh, we are in the seven others instruction, if we are uh, in the seven other instruction, you have to find that. If we are in load and or zor and sub sc, we are using what we call addressing mode. We are using the addressing mode. Addressing mode. We have two uses. Okay. Now we have. Uh, we try. We will try to understand how we will uh, decode those three bits inside the CU. Inside the CU. To decode those uh, bits, we have two modes. The BCC mode. 
or the, uh, the other instructions mode. We have uh, this decoder, for instance. This decoder is responsible. We can read. We can read here. It's responsible for the addressing mode. For each code, we have each addressing mode. We have uh, DACC, XACC, uh, YDAC, uh, sorry, uh, DAC, XAC, YDAC, YXIC, we have DX, DY, D out, DX plus plus out. We have the eight mode. We saw them here, they are here. And those mode, those addressing mode, are used with the seven first instruction and we talked about that we said that uh, this part generated by uh, the memory unit if you if you, uh, if you remember that uh, is responsible for the addressing model the, the getting access to the b bus uh, sorry i don't remember this uh, they are responsible for what? Wait a minute. They are the source, sorry. They are the source of B. Are they? I have to see the uh, PCB. Not this. They are sorry. They are responsible for the addressing, for the addressing of the right. Sorry, sorry. The, 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 the right, the left path is, is responsible for generating the, the address for the RAM. Generating the address for the RAM. This is the left part. Uh, what is it? The left part. This part. And this part is the destination. Is the destination. This is, if we look at the schematics, this part. This part. We have multiple destinations here, and we can choose which we have multiple destination destinations, and we have to choose which destination with this part. With, uh, with uh, this part, with uh, this part. Anyway, those addressing modes, uh, we will study them. They will generate signals to the data path. For instance, if we choose the addressing mode, the, 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 the three bits are there the three bits are there this one and this one and this one the three bits in the middle this is the instruction the the opcode of the instruction if we choose for instance i can modify that if i put for instance one here one here and one here you can look at that you can see that uh, we have those uh, signals changing and we choose the last uh, addressing mode anyway with this three bits we can change any addressing we want but those uh, bits are controlling other controlling signals are controlling signal they are controlling uh, for, for instance the ix the yl the xl the eh the e L, uh, the OL, the LD, if you remember that, and uh, the PL also. They have uh, some control. They have some control over the control over the control signals. If you remember, the control signals are there. We have all the control signals. We studied them last time, and we will see how we can use. Uh, the, uh, this decoder to control those uh, signals. Uh, for instance, if we see this, for instance, this is this is the simplest one. What is this signal? Can you remember me? What is this signal? What is used for? 
the i x. What, what is, is the signal i x? This is this is the equation. What is used for? Sir, uh, is used uh, to increment uh, the value. Yes. yes. Which, which one? one? Which, which one? one? Uh, counter. Yes, counter. Which uh, give me the name, the name of the counter. You have multiple counters in our uh, data path. Yes, yes. Which one? Yes, yes it's, it's true. X, uh, X, very good. This is used to increment the X. It's used to increment this one. It's used to increment the X. And if we see, if we uh, look at the uh, if we look at the instructions here for the address, the only addressing mode that increments the x is the last one. If we put one, 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 we have x plus plus. Uh, this is, you have to understand that this kind of mode is used specifically for the arrays. It is for the table. And I have to precise, to precise exactly what kind of table. This mode is precisely used to display the image on the screen. You know that uh, Gigatron will display images on the screen. Of course, uh, you know that, uh, for instance, we have uh, Gigatron and we have the screen. This is the screen. The screen is uh, inside composed of multiple pixels. They have multiple pixels, dots of colors, uh, pixels of colors. And they are uh, in memory inside the machine, inside the Gigatron, they are represented by an array. And you have to choose uh, which color for each pixel, like an array, common tableau. There's a tableau check. And this, this instruction is used specifically for that. They are designed, it's not an instruction, this mode. This mode is used exactly for that. You choose uh, XX, uh, that means you fill the, this pixel and you pass it to the next pixel, to the neighbor pixel. Uh, this, is, this mode is used exactly for that. And, and this mode is the only one that, that uses X, uh, X plus plus. This is why we can see directly here that if this mode is activated, this mode is 1, 1, 1. We will try it on the, uh, the simulator. If we put 1, 1 here, this uh, mode is activated, we can see, and this signal is activated too. And this is the only one that can activate that. You have to understand that this part, this part including some gates here, they are what we call in digital design a uh, combination circuit. This is a combination circuit. We have the input, this is the input of our combination circuit, and we have the output, the outputs are there. The outputs are our signals. If we activate this one, we get this activated. At the same time, we get all the signals. You have to understand. We, we, we get this. We get this. We have to understand this. This is simple. When you have this uh, mode, this uh, control signal will be activated. Uh, for the next, for the, those two, I don't remember exactly what the E H and L H. No, I will try to uh, to see others. I will try to explain. Uh, okay, they, they are. I will explain that later. Let's explain those two guys. Those two signals, X L and Y L. Can anyone of you explain? Uh, for us, what is uh, the signal used for? Can you explain that? Uh, it's at the, this is the, the right signal the, to uh, put good. a value inside the X. Very good, very good. There are uh, 
X load they are used for the rights. Very good. They are used for the rights of the X and the rights of the Y. By the way, the, 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 uh, here they are. XL and uh, YL. Okay, and they are, if we see the, the schematics, they are activated by only two uh, modes. We have the fourth mode, I will uh, try to simulate it. We have the fourth mode, like this, and the fifth mode, the fifth mode, like this. And you can see it. It is the same. It is exactly the same. X and Y, the, the right part of the mode we, uh, we call the destination. The destination we can uh, write on Y only with uh, mod 5, and we can write on X only on mod 4. On mod 4. This is the destination. This is the destination. And those signals also are very simple. They are there, direct. There is no combinational circuit here. They are direct. They are direct. XL, uh, XL and YL. Uh, sure, yeah. Yes? Only one uh, signal control activated? Uh, uh, no. If you... Uh, if you activate this uh, line, there are others. Uh, uh, I will choose another one. For this case, it, it's only one. But if I choose, for, for instance, uh, let's see uh, this one, for instance. We, you will have uh, multiple for, for this one, too. But uh, anyway, if you activate, uh, I, I will choose, for instance, this. The set. You have a multiple. This signal is activated too, but we will see it uh, later. You have multiple, multiple signals activated by only one line, one uh, mode uh, chosen. You understand that? You, you choose one mode, and you will get multiple signals activated. For the for those two cases, fifth and the fourth, we have only one signal. It's uh, we we'll saw we see that later, but we have for for, for this instance, this mode will activate only this. The others are uh, yes, the others are not activated, and therefore for the Y two. But this is a special case. This is a special case. It's not the norm. It's not the generality. We we'll see in the others that each uh, mode will activate multiple signals. Multiple signals. We choose those three. Uh, uh, signals because they are simple. They are simple. If we choose, for instance, this IX, the last one, you will get multiple uh, multiple signals. For instance, we, uh, we got those signals. We got we got the OL signal too, etc., etc. We get multiple uh, signals. Okay. Uh, should we continue? Yes. Yes. Okay. We will try to understand now those two signals, EH and EL. Uh, which part those signals are used? MAU. Very good. They, very good. They are responsible to choose which address we should give to the RAM. They, are, they choose which address we, uh, we should give, give to the RAM. That means uh, that uh, these two are controlled by the right, the right part of the mode between the brackets D X Y D Y X D D D and Y X plus plus. These two guys are fired, are activated by the right, uh, sorry, the left part of the mode, left part of the mode. And they are controlled by two simple, by two simple gates, by two simple gates. We have and uh, or gates. Uh, for instance, if you remember the use of the memory, use of the memory, we said, yeah. uh, I don't remember which part exactly. We did it. 
I guess, uh, what is it? It's not here. It's here. This is the table that uh, choose which, uh, choose the mode of the memory, the mode of the memory. For instance, when we choose 0D, 0D means we put 00, 00 on EH and EY, if you remember that. Yes. Yes. We have, if you, if you check the D here, we have uh, a D here, a D here, D here, we have five. We have five mods that use the D. Ah, uh, sorry. This one is not included. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the, the, the D, zero D, I mean. We have this uh, mod, this one, this one, this one. We have four. If we try them, we should always get zero, zero here. Why? Because we are following this table. This table, if we put zero, zero, if you remember what we did the last time, if we put zero, zero here, we get zero D, we get the D, we get the D. We can try it, we will try it. We will try to put all the combination. We have the first one is, uh, what is it? The first one is uh, zero, 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 okay, let's try it, if we put zero, 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 normally we will get the output zero, zero, we got exactly what we wanted, we got zero, zero, that means we choose the D addressing mode, the D addressing mode, the memory we use the D like an address, like an address, okay, this is working, this is working, we try to activate this, this is the fourth. Okay. I will activate the fourth. The fourth is like this. 100. And we we'll get the same as 0, 0. I will activate the fifth. This one. The fifth, same. I get 0, 0. And, how, and the last one is the sixth. Yes, the, the sixth. The sixth, and we get 0, 0. Do you have questions? We get zero, zero. And do you have questions? No, no. Okay, we'll continue. Uh, this is exactly the behavior of a combinational circuit. We are trying to implement a combinational circuit that controls those two output and we use those two gates. And we got exactly what we wanted. When we activate the four, uh, this, this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, the four uh, addressing mode, we always get zero, zero. Let's study now the, the next one, the X. Can you give me the code for the X of uh, EH and uh, EL? What value should EH and uh, EL output for, uh, to, uh, to obtain the X address? Give me the, the value. We studied the, uh, that the last time, the previous uh, session. If you if want to output the X, which value should be out by EL and EH? Can you give me, can, can you give me the output? Zero, zero, no, zero, 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 this is for D. Zero, zero, D. We, uh, we did it. This is a... Zero, zero, one. No, uh, you, you didn't understand the question. I want the, uh, the, uh, the value of EH and EL to get X. You have two, two bits. I don't want the, uh, the input here. I want the output, the value of the output, to get X on the memory. We did that, we did uh, that the last session. How we did that, we dive, we explained the inside of 
the MRU, the MAU. You can, this is HL and this is L, uh, H, uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, how they are called. Uh, e H and E L, E H and E L. This is E H and this is E L. And no, zero one. Zero one. Very good. We did it the, the last time. We put one here to get X, and we put zero here to get zero. To get zero. Get zero. Uh, okay. This is the, the all the uh, the components are related. Uh, they are all related. Okay, uh, we come back here, uh, then uh, if we want, uh, we, we, we need to get one here and zero here. And uh, let's activate this line. To activate this line is zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. This is the first mode. And we can see here that we output the right signals. Now the MIU will output, will uh, let the memory choose 0x. Zero x. Zero x. Did you understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, did, uh, we will do the same for the others. Uh, can you give me, for instance, YD? For the address in YD, which value should we uh, output there? 1, 0. One zero, good. It's ten. One zero. Let's try it. Why is the second? Is the second uh, value ten? Let's see. Okay, we get the the, the 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 right value. We get the right value. Let's try for y x. Y x normally we get one one. One one. Very good. And uh, this is the value three. Here. And we get one one here. Our uh, mode is working properly. We did this, uh, this one, this one, this one. The last one. This is a y x plus plus. This is the, the same y x. The plus plus uh, the, is, is another signal. Y x. One one one. Yes, one one one. The input, the output is. Uh, One one. Huh? The output is the output is one one. One one. Very good. It's one one. One one. We put seven and we get one one. Uh, the explanation of how we use uh, those two ends is very simple. Is a combinational circuit is a combinational circuit. Uh, you have to do a uh, study and you get you will get uh, this two uh, this two and gate. And if we can if you are uh, how I said that if you are uh, somehow some clever you can uh, deduce it directly you can deduce it directly this one is activated, the E is only activated when we get X, if you remember that. And X, you have X here, X here, and X, and X here. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. The EL, the EL, we have X here, the X here, and the X here. This uh, this uh, EL is only activated, is only put to one when we use X. And we did an end, uh, uh, sorry, an OR for those X. Uh, the same for the EH. EH is activated only when you use Y. When you use Y. When you look here, we have Y here, one. We have Y here, we have Y here. You can check here, we have Y here, Y here, Y here. This is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. But we have the general method uh, to construct, to design a combinational circuit by using the, the five step method. 
Anyway, we finished with those two signals. Uh, which one left? We have this one and this one. We will study, uh, study them at the same time. Do you remember those two signals? OL is for? For uh, right signal to write uh, the new value. Uh, yes, which uh, register? Uh, accumulator and the output. Uh, yes, OL is for output and LD is for the accumulator. Uh, we'll start with the OL. Uh, when we should write on the OL? When? Uh, y uh, x plus plus. Yes, yes very good. Uh, yeah, with, with the, those two modes, the, those two modes are the only modes that can uh, when we should write on the outs. And you can see that very easily the OL gets this signal from uh, an OR uh, an OR gate with those two lines with the lines of uh, with the, the modes of uh, uh, D out and Y X out. This is very simple. And this is exactly the same for LD. LD is a signal to write on X, uh, sorry, on the accumulator. On the accumulator. When uh, we use accumulator is a D and X Y. Yes, we are used for the, with the four uh, first uh, modes. Uh, and uh, it's uh, very simple. We can see this uh, this gate, this uh, OR gate, uh, that uh, is uh, that activates when we choose one of the four. One of the four. If we choose one of the four, this end gate, uh, this OR gate, sorry, activate the uh, the accumulator uh, signal. Uh, by the way, we have those two end. Those two end are what we call an enable end. What is an enable end? An enable end is a gate end that sometimes enable this uh, output to activate or not. They are like uh, an activator. An enable. It's like an enable. Uh, the enable signal is here. Sometimes, sometimes, even if we are on the right uh, addressing mode, we should not let this uh, those signal activate. We will see that later. Uh, you have to remember just that this signal, this signal is coming from uh, the store. We we study that just uh, just a moment. We will study that that store will disactivate. Disactivate the signal of OL and LD. This end is used for activate and disactivate. So enable or disable those two signals. We will see that, see that later. Anyway, we studied the uh, OL and LD, they are very simple. Do you have questions? No. Okay. This, uh, this is very fine. Uh, this part concerns uh, or implies uh, the uh, seven first instructions. The seven first instructions. We talked about that and we said that LD, and or XOR, and SUB, SC are the first instruction. The seven first instruction, and in those instructions, we have this uh, addressing mode. Yeah, we could we could use this addressing mode. In the BCC instruction, those three bits now represent what we call the condition. The three bits uh, we change, and we represent the condition uh, here. Here we do have a signal that control this this uh, this switching between modes. 
the condition mode and the addressing mode. This uh, the signal of the, who controls us is this one, this one, this uh, this wire. This wire, if uh, is a zero, we use uh, this decoder. We use uh, the, the the normal addressing mode. If uh, this wire is put uh, to zero, means that we are using the one of the seven instruction. If we use uh, the BCC instructions, this wire becomes one and will disactivate this decoder and at the same time it will, it will, it will activate this multiplexer and this decoder. This decoder and this multiplexer are used with the BCC instruction. We can try this. We can try it. Uh, we have, for instance, this one is activated. Let's see if we choose to use the BCC instruction. The BCC instruction has the code 111. Let's try it on the simulator. If we put 111, we have the BCC activated, and this signal is activated, and you can see here, he, uh, it will disactivate this decoder and activate the multiplexer and the decoder. This is the mechanism of switching between condition and addressing. This is the way how we can switch between condition and addressing mode. Uh, do you understand that? Or should I repeat it? Please, repeat. Okay, we have two modes, you have to remember that. We have two modes of using those three bits, we have two modes. Sometimes we use the condition and sometimes we use uh, the addressing mode. The addressing mode is used by the seven first instructions. Which instructions? Which instructions uh, uh, LD and or XOR and sub SC? Those seven instructions use the addressing mode. But the last one, okay, we uh, left this. The last one, the condition mode, is used by the eighth instruction, which, one, which is a BCC, the branch, the branch instruction. The branch instructions use the condition mode. The condition mode is different. It's different and the, uh, the, the UCC, the, the, the UC, the control unit, uh, outputs a different signals and use another mechanism. Use another mechanism. You have two mechanisms. The, 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 this decoder is used for the addressing mechanism. What we study until now, we study the addressing mechanism, but for the BCC mechanism, for the condition mechanism, we will use other uh, components. We will use uh, this decoder and this uh, multiplexer. Those uh, components have what we call uh, this part. This is the enable input. We have enable here, we have enable here, and we have enable here. Enable. You know this address. Enable is uh, if enable is one, the device is activated. If enable is false, the, the device is disactivated. We can try it here. Just understand that here we have zero. We have zero. This means this one is disactivated. We can see the input is seven. Normally, this one is activated, but we have uh, on the enable input. We have zero, that means that all this device is disactivated. Why is it disactivated in this case? Because we are using the BCC. We are using the BCC uh, instruction. If we change the instruction, for instance, if we uh, choose, for instance, I don't know, the first instruction, the, uh, the, the instruction uh, one, instruction one is, uh, is N. If we choose uh, the N, for instance, we got the end here activated, and the BCC is 
is activated and with this knot we have the label here activated and we can see here the mod is activated again the mod is activated again but at the same time this signal will deactivate this multiplexer and will deactivate this decoder why because they are used for the condition mod for the condition mod should I repeat? Do you have questions? No, no, continue. Did you understand that? I can continue. Yes. Okay, that's good. Excuse me. Oui? Okay. When we can use the addressing mode and when we can use the condition mode? They are automatically uh, chosen by the instruction, the code of the instruction. They are automatically, uh, they are automatically chosen. Uh, how the, how that? For instance, if you choose to uh, to use a BCC instruction like this, this is the BCC instruction. You can see this is automatically. This is the we saw that the last time. This line is about the BCC mode. The, sorry, the BCC instruction. This line is activated. When it is activated, it will deactivate the addressing devices and activate the condition devices. This is automatically done. If you choose another instruction, give me another instruction for instance here. Okay, let's choose this one. Or, or normally, don't use the condition uh, instructions, uh, condition mode. The or use the addressing mod. You can see that the the or the code of the or is the code of the or is a ten. It's ten. I will put ten here. I will put ten here. Okay, this is the, the, the last rebate. Ten. And you can see the or is activated. But at the same time BCC is activated. And this signal will activate the addressing mode and deactivate what? The condition mode automatically. This wire is responsible for activating and deactivating automatically the chosen mode. Uh, and it depends directly, it's uh, related directly to the BCC decoder, to the BCC uh, wire. This BCC wire is activated when the instruction uh, of BCC is chosen. It's chosen. Uh, did you get it or should I explain more? Uh, it's okay. Okay, okay. This, uh, it's very simple. Those two mode are uh, choose it automatically by the instruction. By the instruction, the, the code of the instruction choose which mode is activated and which mode is deactivated. Okay, we have the BCC will activate the condition and the other signals will activate the addressing mode. Okay, we will now try to study the conditions. To study the condition, we need to use the BCC. This is the only instruction that use, that use the condition. The BCC, the, the code of the BCC is a 111. I put 111 on the instruction. I get the line of the BCC activated, and this signal will activate those two. Will activate those two. Uh, the devices, those two components, those two circuits, and deactivate this one. You can see this one is deactivated by by the enable entry. This is the enable. Enable is zero. That means that this one is deactivated, and you can see that uh, there is no output here. All the lines are off. All the lines are off. But this one, you can see that. The... what is it? Uh, it's not this one, sorry, sorry. This one, 
the multiplexer is activated. This one, uh, the neighbor, uh, this one depends actually of another thing, of another thing. Uh, it depends. Ah, it's different. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I will talk about that later. The, the, this, this, uh, this circuit is responsible for the, the BCC instruction, for the condition. But uh, this activation is not controlled by this line. This activation, we will talk about that later, will be uh, used there, we activate, uh, is activated differently. It's activated differently. Uh, this line activates the multiplexer. This multiplexer is used to choose the condition. Is used to choose the condition. If you remember well, we talked about the conditions the last time. And we get the list of our conditions. We have the same bits 00, 0 001. 10, 11, uh, 11, 100, etc., etc. And you have different uh, conditions. This condition, I repeat, they are only used with the BCC, we have the branch instruction. And uh, uh, thus, uh, if you, if you, uh, if you uh, recall, if you remember the, uh, the branch instruction, if the condition is true, the, uh, the, 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 the execution will jump to another, to another instruction. If the condition is false, the execution will pass to the next instruction, the PC, uh, get PC plus one, if the condition is false. This is how we program the, uh, the branch instruction. The branch instruction are used like this. You have the condition, if the condition is true, you jump to another part of the program. If the condition is false, we will not jump, we will just pass to the next instruction, the PC++. PC++. Anyway, we have our conditions, and our condition now are represented by three bits. Our three bits have three bits, sorry, have three bits to represent our condition. Those three bits are the middle bits. This is the same, are the, 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 the middle bits. But we are on the condition mode. If we write here, for instance, uh, I don't know, I will take uh, randomly, I will put 10 here. 10 here. We will check uh, the uh, table here, 10. The condition if IC is uh, smaller is less than zero. If IC contains a value, if IC contains, this is the IC, if IC contains a value, I don't know, minus two for instance, contains a value uh, negative, uh, less than zero, the instruction will jump. Will jump to another address. That means the PC, the PC will change. The PC will change. The PC will take another address. For instance, the PC contains this address. I don't know, we have a 16, I don't know. The PC contains the address 3. If the jump is, uh, if the condition is correct, now the PC will get another different address. We jump to another different address. For instance, 10. For instance, 10. Anyway, he will not get to the next, not PC++. He will not get to 4th. It was a 3. He will not get to 4th. He will get to 4th if the condition is false. If, the, if uh, for instance, the value of AC is plus 2, that means uh, that the condition is false, and this time uh, there is no condition, there is no jump. That means that the next instruction is uh, four, is uh, four. It's not ten or uh, or twenty or a different address. Did you understand that? It's very important. Yes. Okay. I will continue. This time, 
we will try to understand how our uh, UCC will try to interpret these conditions. We need to use to, try to, uh, to find a mechanism that can interpret those conditions. And the mechanism used is very simple, is a multiplexer. This multiplexer is responsible for detecting if the condition is true or false. This multiplexer with this decoder, we see that later, with this decoder are used to find which condition is true and which condition is false. This is the multiplexer. And this is a very, very clever way to do that. We will see that. It's a very clever to do that. Okay, let's see it. We have, we have this multiplexer. We have the three bits. Bit 1, bit 2, bit 3. We have the bit 1, this bit, uh, sorry, this is bit 2. Bit 2 represents the great condition. The bit 3 represents the less condition. And the bit 4 represents the equal condition. If we have uh, different combination, we can get different conditions. We can see that on the table. We have, uh, what is the table of the condition? We have the table of the condition. We have, uh, those bits, we have, we said that uh, this bit represents less than, the bit in the middle, greater than, and the bit, uh, the last bit represents equality. Represents equality. You can check that. Uh, we have this combination. Zero, zero, zero. This is what we call an impossible uh, condition. Uh, this, this condition said that uh, the value of IC is not less than zero, is not greater than zero, and is not equal to zero. This is impossible. This is impossible. This is why it's called never. This is impossible. If we check this one, you have the first bit activated. That means if AC is less than, the first bit represents the less than. We have the less than. Okay. We have the second one, the second bit. The second bit is greater one. We have one here. Greater one. If uh, uh, Sorry, sorry, I reversed, I reversed. Reverse. Uh, this bit is greater than, IC is greater than zero. This bit is, is the reverse. If IC is smaller, it's less than zero. If we have one one, one one means, uh, means different. Why it means different? Because we have IC is uh, uh, greater than uh, zero or IC is less than zero. The two bits, if they are one one, that means they are, uh, that means it, it's, it's more logic, that means that, uh, that symbolizes the difference. We have, if this bit is 1, that means i is equal to 0. If uh, this bit equality with the greater than, we have a greater than or equal. If we have uh, the middle bit uh, is 1 and, the, uh, and uh, the equal is 1, we have less than or equal. And if we have the 3, R1, uh, this is the jump. This is what we call a jump. Where is it? This is always it. This is a jump. That means all the conditions are true and we can jump uh, and we can jump uh, in any case. In any case. Anyway, we have an OR logic between those. We will understand why. We understand why. The, the only thing you have to remember is uh, that 
we have each bit represents uh, a condition. The first one is for greater than, and the second one is for less than, and the last one is for equality. For, uh, uh, for equality. Uh, we have two other important things. Where is it? We have this multiplexer and we have those three bits to choose if the condition is true or false. Anyway, we have to remember, if this output is activated, that means the condition is true. If uh, this is uh, not activated, the condition is false, and the condition is uh, uh, the, 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 the condition by the instruction is written by the, this three bits. By three bits. Each condition we can choose which condition we uh, want to check the instruction in the, the condition base by those three bits. But we have the multiplexer that we use those two entrances to be sure that the condition, to check if the condition is true or false. How that we uh, try to use these two entrants. These two entrants are the seal, the carry uh, output, and we have AC7. AC7 is the seventh bit of uh, the accumulator. Okay, let's see those uh, signals on the data path. We have, we have the UC. This is our UC. Our UC use it uses uh, two more signals. We have the clock. We have the clock. It's not important. But we have CO and we have IC. Those two signals are used for the condition to check if the condition is true or false. And this, those two signals are uh, generated by the IC7 is generated by the IC. Uh, 7 is the last bit. If we have 8 bit, we have 8 bit. The last one, the last one is IC7. IC7. The first one is IC0. IC0 until IC7. And the CEO is, is this. The CEO is the carry. Is the carry bit. Is the carry bit. Those two bits. Uh, can check the value of uh, of uh, the IC if uh, it verifies the condition or not. The mechanism is very clever. It, it, it is somehow difficult. You have to follow to understand. Have to follow to understand. Okay. We have. Uh, can you? Can you explain to me what is the last what the last bit of IC represent in a register? Can you give me the the meaning of this bit? What is the meaning of the last bit of IC? If we uh, in any in any register, it's not specific to IC. In any register. If we take the last bit, we have eight bits. And if we take the last one, the last one is special. It's special. It's not normal bit. What this bit really represents? Sir, I'm not uh, enabled. Uh, mm? No. In, in any value inside a register, the last bit has special, a special meaning. I will give you an example. I will give you an example. Suppose we have our IC and then we have our 8 bits. We have our 8 bits. Okay, I will give you the value. If I give you this value, for instance, uh, this value is, can you give me this uh, value in decimal? What is this value for the uh, gigatron? This value is the value in, in digital, in, uh, in decimal, sorry, in decimal. What is this value? I, I, I want the value in binary. What is this value in decimal? 
Can you give me the, the value in decimal? Uh, oh, are you sure? sure? No, I'm not. Yes, it's, it's not, not the right, right value. value. The right value, you have to understand, the last bit is the sign bit. This is the sign bit, you have to remember that we are using the two complements. Complement do. Ta'alukhur ta'al ishara bishni. Eh, this is B2C. The sign bit, if you, if you remember the... Uh, normally you know that. These uh, those values are signed. Are signed. Those values yes, are yes. if it is positive or negative. It's positive or negative. And, and you have to remember, we are uh, our attitude to use uh, what we call two complements. Complement two. Two complements. You studied that uh, in, uh, in the first year, SM1, and you know exactly what C1. Okay, I repeat the question. What is this value? It's not uh, 128. In two complements, what is this value? Uh, value in the binary. In this one, this one. The value is given in binary, and I want to write the, the, this value in decimal. I don't know if, uh, for instance, 91, minus 91, the, 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 you have to, uh, to make the conversion, conversion from binary to uh, decimal using uh, two complements. Complement. I can't, I can't hear. hear. Uh, it's have your microphone is not working properly. I said fifty five. How much? Uh, how uh, was the value? Two hundred fifty five. It's not just one thing. No. Uh, I will give you uh, some uh, some clues. Je vais vous donner un indice, some clues. This is one. This is the negative value. We find uh, minus here. This is the negative value. I put you one here. One is for negative and zero for positive. This is negative value. Two uh, fifty-five uh, is a positive. Is a positive value. I can't remember. Okay, I will. Give you uh, a small, how we call that? I will give you a small revision of how we can calculate the two complements. But you have to understand that, you have to, uh, to remember that. I will try, uh, I will do an example upon four bits. I will not try to, uh, to use eight bits. It's, uh, Complicated. I will try to try to do an example uh, on four bits. If we, if I give you, for instance, the value two on a four bits is written in binary, tap. This is very simple. This is tap. But minus two in uh, uh, two complements. Two complements. You have. Uh, to do those two steps. The first step, you have to invert this value. You have to invert 
this value. To invert, this is uh, one complement. To invert, each bit should be inverted. It becomes one, one, zero, one. This is the first step. You have to invert. You have to invert the value. The second step, you have to add one. To add one to this value. To add one. Okay, we take this value. Okay, we. Uh, we need more space. Okay. I will take this value like this and I can add a one. It become it becomes a ten one one one. We have this value. This is minus two. This is minus two. And this is the method, the method on how to uh, convert to two complements. You have two steps. Two steps. You have the positive value. You convert. You invert each bit. You do the inversion. The zero becomes one, and the one becomes zero. And we get this value. And this value you have to add a one. This is the representation of minus 2. Minus 2 is written like this way. I will do the... Uh, uh, before that, before that. You just need to remember, this is the sign bit. If this one, uh, if this bit is at 1, that means it's a negative. If it is at 0, it is a positive. Anyway, I will do the... Uh, the operation in in the uh, the other way in the reverse the reverse way that means if uh, like this I give you what is the example I give you eight ones eight ones I will try to do the same but this one uh, this time this time. I will start with the binary format. I will start with the binary format. I have this value. I will do the same, but uh, with four bits. With four, not eight bits, four bits. I have this value. I know it's two complements. I know this bit is means that this value is negative. If you saw. If you see, sorry, if you see that the value is negative, you will do exactly the same to get the real value. You will do exactly the same. This is a negative value. We are sure that our value is negative. We put the minus here, and we will do exactly the same. We will invert this value. Inverse. It's bit, uh, each bit should be reversed. We have one, 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 one. It becomes zero, zero, zero. zero. And this is exactly the same steps. And I will add a 1 here. It becomes 0, 0, 001. This value represents 1. That means this binary representation is minus 1. This binary representation is minus 1. And this is the same here. We have this value. This is you have to do the same operation, and you have to uh, give me the value of this value on eight bit. Okay, did you understand that? Should I repeat? It's very simple. I will uh, resume the. Uh, the operation. The operation is very simple. If you have a, uh, if you have a decimal value like this, a decimal value, you have uh, to write the in binary format the positive value. You have uh, next you have uh, to reverse it, and next you have to add plus one. That's what to get the, va the final value. Anyway, I, I didn't uh, process the, the example correctly. 
but you have to do those steps. In the contrary, if you have a binary value and you are sure it's a negative value, you have to do the same. You have to do the same process. You have a negative value. You have to do the same process. You have to reverse and add one and add one to this. This value is four means that that this is minus four. It represents minus four. Okay, now you have to give me the value of of this. Of this, uh, so minus one. Then. Minus one. This is the same. It's exactly the same. This is uh, minus one. Any, uh, anyway, we uh, did a revision. We did uh, a revision of uh, uh, this process. The process of converting from this amount to uh, to binary using two complements. Anyway, the uh, the idea is that. Uh, we will use the we will use the seven the eight the last bit the, the sign bit and we will give it to the CU the CU to check the condition to check the condition we have this bit and we have the CU can you can you give me the definition of what with what is a carry? But for example, Laratuni. Laratuni is pretty simple. You know what is a carry. You know what is a carry. The carry is a okay. A bit zero. I can't hear clearly what you are saying. Can you repeat, please? يقدر يكون one. Uh, sure, but uh, what is the definition? What is uh, the meaning of this? Uh, the carry bit. It's very simple, and you have that on the course. The uh, combination of course they are well defined. What is the carry? The carry bit. Sir, the beat is like an Yes, not exactly that. Yes, I understand what are you what are you saying, but it's different. I will explain. I will explain. It's different. It's uh, if you remember the combinational course. Uh, let's see it. Let's see the combinational course. Just to understand exactly what uh, we are talking about. If we say sir, uh, add yes, ladder, yes. When uh, addition uh, A and B plus B, addition B is like uh, yes. You're correct. This is the the the, the last bit. Okay, I will explain it on the uh, on the course. If you remember. If we have other or uh, a substructor, we have what we call the carry bit, return. Like uh, this one, this one is called sometimes the fifth bit, the sinking bit. And I can do bit, but try to sink a bit. Why? Let's see it on paper. Let's see it on paper. Uh, let's suppose we have this value. On four bits, I will add this value with this value. Also on four bits, I can do the addition. We have zero, one here, one here, and we have zero here, and I have a, I have the carry. This is the carry. This is the fifth bit. Uh, our result is this on four bit. This is four bit. The result is here. Result is here, and the result, this result, is uh, output here. It output on S, 
But sometimes, sometimes we have an overflow like this. We have an additional, an additional value, and this additional value is called the carry. It's called the C, the carry. In this situation, it's not always the case. Huh? You have to remember that. In this situation, we have an overflow. We have an overflow. We have, we can't add this value and this value and get the result on 4 bits. It's impossible. 4 bits is not enough to retain, to contain this result. We will need the fifth bit, the sinking bit. The fifth bit is sometimes called the carry. This is the carry and it can be, uh, sure, it can be 1 or it can be 0. If uh, they are, uh, they are not, the, the, we haven't an overflow, we get zero. We get zero. Anyway, this is the definition of the carry. The carry is the last column, the fifth column. In our case, uh, because our value is on eight bit, the carry bit is the ninth. Color, the ninth color. That means uh, this example should be done on 8 bits for our ADU. For our ADU. Uh, did you understand that? It's, it's very simple. simple. It's, very it's simple. simple. It just uh, the, the last key. Yes, it's, it's very simple. simple. It's very simple. But uh, you will see that this, uh, this bit is very important to test the condition. Anyway, we uh, conclude here, we have uh, two bits to test the, condu the condition, if it's true or false. And we can uh, verify that uh, on this table. We have this table and we will see that those two, uh, those two bits are used to check if the condition is true or false. Let's see uh, this part, for instance. This part, this is, I can read that, this is the carry of minus IC is equal to 1, and IC uh, means that IC is equal to 0. Okay, we will read and I will explain later. We have uh, IC7. This is the sine bit. This is the sine bit. Si if sine bit is equal to 1, we are sure that IC is less than 0. And we have the last one. The last one, if we have uh, IC7 is equal to 0, that means the value is positive of IC. And if we have the K of minus IC is equal to 0, then we have IC is greater than or equal uh, to zero and IC is different to zero. I will explain. I will explain. We will start with the IC7. This is the sine bit. This is the sine bit. If you have this condition, if the sine bit is equal to one, what we can say about uh, greater than, less than, greater or equal, what you can say about IC and uh, zero, compared to zero. If we have IC, the bit, the eight bit, the last bit of the IC is equal to one. What you can say about uh, this, uh, about uh, this situation? Uh, meaning condition is uh, true. Yes. Like, uh, I see uh, last zero. Uh, I see is less than zero. That's true. The, the I see is negative. I see is negative. It's very simple. If you find, if you found uh, this, uh, the last bit is equal to one. If you find the last bit is equal to one, means that this this is a negative value. This is a negative value. This is, I see, it's less than zero. If it's negative, it is less than zero. It's less than good. 
This is good. And uh, now it is simple. It is simple. If you have uh, to, to find that IC is less than zero, it's very really simple. You have to verify the IC seven bit. If it's equal to one, means that IC is minus than uh, minus. It's negative. It's less than zero. Now let's check this. If the carry of minus IC is equal to 1, means that IC is equal to 0. This is a very, very clever way to detect if the value of IC is equal to 0 or not. I will give you an example to understand. You have to give an example. You have to give an example. Okay, let's see that. Let's try this. We have the value, any value. We have this value, for instance. This is the value. This is three. This is three. Now, uh, this method is based on the calculation of the minus IC. Let's calculate the minus three. I will calculate the minus 3. I have the 3. To calculate the minus 3 is very simple. I have to, uh, to, uh, to do the first step. The first step is the, rever is, uh, the uh, uh, inversion. I will reverse all the bits. And I will add 1. I will add 1 and I will get this value. This is minus 3. This is minus this is minus 3. If you follow the order, if you follow the process, you can see that uh, minus 3 did, didn't generate a K operation. If we did this, we did this, we did this operation plus 1. Here the carry is equal to, uh, sorry, zero, zero yes, uh, the, the result is this, and the carry is uh, zero, the carry is uh, zero, and we can check any positive value, any positive value will always produce a zero carry, we can check that. We can check that. We can, uh, for instance, try for the the greatest positive value. The greatest positive value in this case is in the case of four bits. What is the greatest positive greatest positive value on four bits? Sorry, I repeat again. Uh, what, what is the greatest positive value in C2 on 4 bits. On 4 bits. What is the, uh, the, the, the greatest positive value on 4 bits? The, the example are on 4 bits, but uh, we generate that on uh, 8 bits. The positive value is? Uh, 6 uh, plus 6. Is 7. Is uh, seven is the greatest one on four bits. We can't uh, we can't get more than seven. Eight. This uh, you have to remember. This is uh, the sign bits. The sign bits. You, if you if I put for instance eight here, eight here, eight here. This is not a positive value for the C2. Two complements for the C2. This is one means that this is a negative value. Eight can be represented. That means that the seven is the greatest value. And do we try the same? The greatest value is seven. Seven, I mean, uh, revert it. And I will add one. That means 
plus 1. This is the representation of minus 7. This is minus 7. This is minus 7. And the, 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 the most important, we don't have a chemi. The idea is this. You can check, you can try any positive number, any positive number, and we try to convert it uh, to minus to uh, to minus this value. You will always get a zero on the chemi. This is the idea. I took the the greatest one. I can I can for instance check the the smallest one. The smallest positive number in C2 One, uh, is zero, zero. very good. It is value one. It is the value one, and it will get the same results. You huh. have one. If I reverse, we get this, and if uh, sorry, I get this, and if I add one, I will get this. Anyway, the idea is that the k is zero i didn't i didn't get an overflow uh, adding this with this there is no overflow the k is zero that means any positive number converted to a negative number we don't have a k this is the first test this is the first test we will try the same with the negative values the negative values I will take, for instance, minus 1. Minus 1. This is minus 1 in... This is minus 1 in C2. This is minus 1. I will convert it to plus 1. I have, I have to convert it to plus 1. You have to understand that. Uh, the, the operation is this. The operation is uh, the carry of minus IC. I have a value inside IC. I have uh, to... Uh, uh, to negate it, to negate it, to uh, to put minus, to put minus, to negate it. Okay, I have uh, minus one, minus one. I have uh, to revert it, becomes a zero, zero, zero. And I have uh, to add one. It become, it becomes, it becomes one. And of course we have the K zero. The K zero. This is the smallest negative number. What is the greatest negative number in C2 in uh, on four bits? Can you give me the the greatest negative number? Minus one. Uh... One zero zero. It is the value of uh, decimal. This is the value minus this one. This one. This is minus in C two. This is minus eight. This is minus eight. This is uh, very. Good. This is minus eight. I will do the same operation. Minus 8, reverse the base, and add 1. And add 1. Okay, I have to be careful here. Okay, plus 1, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, I get this. I get uh, this, uh, which is uh, 8. Anyway, uh, the K, it remains uh, 0. The K, it remains uh, 0. The K remains uh, 0. The, uh, I have to resume what we did till now. We tried the positive numbers. If we reverse them, if we negate them, there is no carry. For the negative values, it is exactly the same. If we have a negative value, if we negate them, negate them, we put a minus sign. 
uh, the same that is now a carry on the process of uh, of negating them. But we will remark, we will note, we will remark that the zero, the value zero is different. This is the only value which gives us a carry of one. I have zero. Let's calculate, let's calculate minus zero. I want to have zero. I want to calculate minus zero on C2. I will try to do uh, the, the same steps. I have uh, four zeros. We have to revert them. And we have to add one. We have to add one. What do we get? Plus one. We get zero. Zero, 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 one, and we have, uh, of course, zero. Minus zero is equal to zero. Minus zero is equal to zero, and this is the only situation when we get that the carry is equal to one. The carry is equal to one only if we try to negate the zero value. And this is a, a good remark, this is the only way, this is a good way to detect if the value is equal to zero or no, or no. It is very simple. If we take, if we take AC, minus AC, if we check minus AC, whatever the value inside IC, if we do the minus, the, neg uh, the negative value, if we, calculate the negative, uh, if we try to negate IC and we get, and we get that the carry is equal to 1, means that inside IC we have the value 0. Have the value 0. If we get uh, a value different from 0, uh, different from 1, sorry, it's equal to zero. That means that IC is different from Z. Did you understand this process? This process, you can check it later by yourself, but the idea is very simple. We have to see the carry of minus IC. If the carry is equal to one, means that IC contains the value zero. If it's not, if the uh, carry is equal to zero, means uh, that uh, IC uh, does not have the value zero. And of course, uh, it's very important to know if IC contains a zero or uh, not, because uh, it belongs to our conditions. It belongs to our conditions. Did you understand that? Did you understand that? Yes. Okay. It's very simple. We have uh, two conditions. We have uh, the first bit. This is the carry. This part uh, represents uh, represent, uh, represent this bit. Represent this bit. If, it, if it's one, uh, of course, you have uh, to find this. Uh, you, have to, 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 you have the IC here. And the RU you have to calculate minus IC. You have to give it to the RU. The RU will calculate minus IC. And we have two, prob uh, two probabilities. We have uh, uh, C or here is equal to 1. If it's equal to 1, means that IC contains the value 0. It contains 0. And uh, in the other situation, in the other case, if uh, we get a zero here, that means that IC contains a value different from zero. Different from zero. This is the use of CO. That means if we are doing a, a branch instruction, a branch instruction, the operation on the RU must be a minus IC. The negation of IC. Why? Because we will use the CO 
signal to detect if the IC is equal to zero or not. Did you understand that? Did you understand that? Yes. Okay. And we have this one is very simple. I uh, the last bit the sign bit. If the sign bit is equal to zero, means that I C is infer is uh, less than zero. And we have uh, this part is used this condition is used to calculate the greater than. The condition is very simple. If I C, uh, sorry, if uh, the sign bit is equal to zero, that means if you have the sign bit is equal to zero, we have two possibilities. Can you name name uh, them? I I can't hear. Uh, AC uh, seven equals zero means. That means positive uh, number. Very good. Or positive numbers or or uh, carry or zero. The zero two. The zero is not positive. We have positive numbers. Negative numbers and we have zero. If you have uh, the sign bits is equal to zero, we have two possibilities. Either it is a positive number or is a zero value. Do you understand that? That means you see it's a zero. Okay. And you have to add, this is the add end, to check if it is a zero or not. If, if we, we have an end here, and we check the carry minus C should be equal to zero. If this one is equal to zero, carry minus IC is equal to zero, means that, which time we have? Uh, no, uh, last bit, like, uh, no, what? Means yeah, last. No. Carry minus I C equals zero means that the value is not zero. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's not zero. We have we have two conditions. We have a positive number, positive or zero number, and we have the second condition. The the value is not zero. That means the value is positive, is greater than zero. We have, we have, we have to, uh, we have to understand that. Can you repeat? No, no. We have we have three situations. I will repeat. I will repeat. We have three situations. We have we need to detect three situations. If it's negative, uh, sorry, if it's equal to zero, it was detected here. So the last bit, the last bit detects if it's equal to zero. The middle bit. Detect if it's negative with this condition. And the first bit, we have to combine two conditions. The first one, I said the, the sign bit should be zero. That means that the value is positive or zero. And at the same time, we should verify that it's not zero to be sure that the value is positive. The value is greater than. It's not uh, positive or not. It's greater than. This is the greater than. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. I will repeat briefly. We have the three bits. We have uh, the, the last bit is uh, IC is equal to zero. This column is the middle bit. IC is less than zero. And it's very pretty simple. We have to check the same bytes. The same bytes. Same bits, sorry. And the last condition is uh, difficult. How we can detect that IC is positive? 
To detect that IC is positive or uh, greater than zero, you have to check two conditions. You have to verify that it is uh, positive that the carry, uh, the, the, the sign base is zero, and at the same time you have to check that uh, it is not zero. It is uh, not zero. You have to combine these two conditions to be sure that IC is uh, greater than zero. Anyway, each uh, column represents a bit. Represents a bit here. A bit here. A bit here. Can we check, for instance? Can we check, for instance? If we have this one, if you have IC greater than zero, you should combine those two bits. The sign base should be equal to zero. And the carry carry bit should be equal to zero two. That should be you have to remember that. That should be zero zero. If we have zero zero carry and sign bits, if we have zero zero, that means that IC is greater than zero. Can you understand that? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. We have to check the AC less than zero. To, to get AC less than zero, it's very really simple. The, we have to check only one bit. You have to check the IC. If IC, uh, sorry, we have to check the sign bit. If the sign bit is equal to one, that means that the uh, that IC is less than zero. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, we have this condition, difference. For the difference, we have to check that this condition, uh, this condition, or this condition are true. This condition are true, or this condition are true. It, it is a no. It is a no. Either, to, to check if difference, uh, to check if difference, Either the bit, the sign bit is equal to zero, or if the, the, the sign bit is equal to zero, the carry bit should be equal to zero too. To check this condition. Okay. Uh, to check if I C is equal to zero, it's very simple. You have to check if the carry is equal to one. Very simple. To check if I C is greater than or equal to zero. We have to check this. The carry must be one, or the carry must be zero. But at the same time, the sign bit should be zero. But the last one, the, the sixth, I see uh, less than or equal zero. We have uh, either the carry is equal to one, or the sign bit is equal to one, but always uh, one of these three conditions is true. Only one is true. And we will try to combine to uh, implement this table using, using. Do you have questions? It's very important. Sorry. Do you have, it's it's, uh, it's uh, somehow complicated. Did you understand that? Should I repeat this table? Sir, uh, AC uh, greater or uh, equal to zero? Yes. AC greater or equal to zero. We have uh, two conditions. Uh, we have to use the or between these two conditions. Either the, uh, the, the carry is one. If the carry is one, that means it's equal to zero. That means equal to zero. Or, uh, or you have to check this. That means the carry is equal to zero, uh, means that it's not zero, and at the same time, the sign bit should be zero, means that the value is positive. Should I repeat? We have two conditions. We have this condition or this condition. We have uh, the last column or 
the first column. The first column detects if the value is equal to zero. If it's equal to the, the, the zero, means that I see is greater or equal, the curve. And the last column detects if it's greater, if it's greater. If it's greater, to, uh, to verify if it's greater, we have uh, to have these two conditions. The sign bit should be zero, and the carry bit should be zero. The two should be zero. Sheikh, yes? This one or this one? This column or? It's not, it's not name. The end is here. The end is uh, upon one column. The last column is uh, an end, we And then see who or. The column say, I don't say or. What the or, you will see this or is implemented by the multiplexer. The job of the multiplexer is to implement this or. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay, let's continue. We have a special case. هذا <تصفيق> Entry is an enable. This is the way to activate the multiplexer. This multiplexer is only, I repeat, it is only activated when it is a conditional instruction with BCC, only with BCC. If it is activated, it has a, a three inputs here, and we have the zero here, and then we have the K and the sine bit. And the sine bit. If you remember a multiplexer, how it works, the multiplexer you put here a value and a number, and the multiplexer we choose which uh, which value corresponding to the number should be uh, be passed to the output. You know how the multiplexer works. Now. Let's try all the possibilities. We have the four possibilities. And those possibilities are used to check the, the, the condition of IC. You have to remember, I have, you have to remember this. In the condition instruction, in the condition instruction, the IC is calculating the minus. Of IC. Uh, sorry. The RU is calculating the minus IC. The, the I is calculated the minus I U uh, to use uh, to use the K to use the K. Okay, you have in this we are in this configuration with the BCC. You have in this configuration. Anyway, we have those two signals, and we have four possibilities. We have zero 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 uh, sorry zero 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 one ten or eleven. We have four different possibilities. Possibilities, and we try to see how we work with our conditions. You have to remember this: if the condition is true, we have one here. If it's false, we have zero. If we have zero zero here, what we can conclude? The multiplication we choose, we have zero zero. We choose greater, very good. We choose a greater. Now, these three bits are used to choose the condition. If, for instance, I want to check this condition, this condition, 0, 1, 1, I will put it, I will put it. Sorry, the condition was 0, 0, 1, sorry. 0, 0, 1. This is the condition. The condition is what? We have to test if IC is greater than 0. Greater than 0. 
and we can see here we have the greater and we have here zero zero means that Uh, sorry, I have to choose the instruction and BCC. BCC instruction is there. One, one, and one. Uh, we have, we choose the BCC and the, the matrix is activated. What we get, we can, we can, the condition is true. Here, the condition is true. Why? Because we have zero here and zero here. The condition is true. Let's try another uh, operation. If I put for instance, one here and zero here. One here, uh, if uh, the k is equal to, to one, it means that k equal to zero. Equal to zero. I see it's equal to zero, and it is not greater. I see it's not greater, and we we get here the condition is false. The multiplexer checking the condition. The condition is false. Uh, if, if I if I, I try to get, get a negative, negative number, for instance, this is uh, if uh, the, the the sign base is negative, means that the IC contain a negative value. That's true. IC contain uh, if you have IC seven it's equal to zero, means that it's a negative value, and we get this condition is a false. You can see here it's false. It's not greater. It's not greater. Do you understand? Okay. Well, I will try the, the another one. The another, the next one. The next one is this one. Uh, we, ha we have to put 10 to check if IC is less than zero. Okay, let's put it on the condition. Condition is 10. It could be true or it could be a false. We have different possibilities here. Here, if you have a zero zero, zero zero, from this you can check that from this. If I see if the sign bit is uh, if the sign bit is equal to zero, means that the value is positive, positive or equal to zero. And the last is. It's false. The less is false. I see is not less than zero. This is true. This is true. If I put one here, what we get? The condition is true. I can't hear you. Did you have questions? That means. Uh... Yes, that means uh, that. Uh, the what is it? The, the condition is uh, true. If we have, for instance, uh, this, what 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 what, uh, what is this combination? Yes, condition constant. So what is this? What uh, if we have uh, C is one and uh, sine is zero? What is the value of IC? Thus. No. If you have uh, uh, the k is equal to 1 and then the sign b is equal to 0, the IC contains uh, uh, what? Equal. No, no, no. The value, the value of IC. I need to know uh, uh, by those two uh, bits we can deduce the value of IC. The IC contains the value. Zero contains zero. zero. Yes. If it's uh, if it's contains zero, it's, uh, it's it's not less than zero. The condition becomes false. Becomes false. Okay. okay. Let's try uh, the next one. The next one is different. The next one is different. This is where uh, we have an R. We have an R implemented by the multiplexer. We have two choices. We have the greater activated and the less activated. That means that if IC is less, the condition is true. And the IC, if uh, greater, the condition is also true. It's a null. It's a null condition. Did you understand that? 
Yes, my order. Okay, okay. So it's, it's, uh, we, have, we have two choices. We have two entry, put to one, and we have the two choices here from those two entries. For those two entries. Uh, we have this condition, zero, zero. Means that if you have C is equal to zero, uh, if you have uh, C is equal to zero, and uh, sine B is equal to zero, what is the, the value of IC? The value of IC? Negative, positive. positive. The, the value of IC is, it is positive, very good. It is positive and it was uh, true. If I do this, what is the value of IC? Uh, negative. Negative. It's negative and the value is also true. And uh, if I put this, the value of IC. Positive. No. We, we have, have C is equal to 1 and uh, sine B is equal to 0. I C is uh, I C is uh, equal to 0. You have to remember that. Equal to 0. Uh, this is it. If the K, this is the K. If the K is equal to 1, I C is equal to 0. If the K is equal to 0, means the IC is not 0. You have to remember that. You have to remember that. Okay, let's, uh, okay. let's do it again. Let's do it again. We have C is equal to 1. Means that... K equals 0. Not K, IC, IC equals 0. IC, IC is equal to zero. That means uh, it's not good and it's not less. The condition is false. The condition is false. Okay, let's continue. We have this one. IC is equal to zero. The one hundred. One hundred. One hundred. We have the echo. If I put this, IC is C is equal to K is equal to zero and uh, sine B is equal to zero. What is the value of IC? Positive. The value is very good. The value is positive is not equal. And the condition is false. Very good. If I put this. Uh, of IC uh, negative. Negative. And it is not equal. The condition is false. If you put uh, this now. I see uh, equal uh, zero. Equal zero because uh, the k is equal zero. Uh, sorry, the k is equal one means that it is equal and we have condition is true. Very good. Let's continue. We have this one. AC is greater than or zero. We have to put one or one. Have a one or one. A one o oh, one. Like this, we have a greater or equal. We have greater or equal. We have to try this. What is this? I see is equal to? Positive. And we have greater than? True. It is true. Very good. Uh, if uh, we have this. Uh, sorry, sorry. This. No, sorry, sorry. This one. This one. This one is Kali uh, uh, equal one uh, AC uh, greater or uh, equal uh, zero. Uh, say, say it again. If we have a zero is one. K is one. K is one. AC greater. No. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you didn't get it. You, you have some. You have to understand. It, uh, you have some mis uh, misunderstanding. You have misunderstanding. You have to remember these two entry are used to detect the value of the IC, and those two, uh, those three entry 
are the condition to check. They are different. There are difference between the value of IC and the condition to check. There are two separate, uh, two separate entries. This, this, uh, this doesn't give the condition. This, this gives the value of IC. And uh, this three gives the condition. And the output is if the condition of, of is true or false depending on the value of the IC. I repeat, I repeat the equation. We have with this two entry, what is the value of IC? Sir, uh, I see. Uh, mm. These two. Uh, yes, means that. That means. Uh, I see uh, greater. Uh, no. And if you say, okay, let's show a little bit. Kiru did carry. It's a girl one and a half. I see zero. I'm not sure. I didn't see that. The girl did carry. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. No. The girl did carry. I'm not going to deny that. 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 C'est exactement la condition. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Le guide est là. Ah, ok. Le guide, le A, c'est le C. Le guide qui est fait à la fin de la journée, c'est le A, c'est le C. Donc, le but de C, le C, c'est le fameux des négatifs. Le C est 0, un des petits mains, il y a des positifs, il y a 0. D'accord. Okay. What do we have here? We have AC is equal to equal to zero. Equal to zero, and the condition is true. The condition is true because the condition we have the greater and the equal. The greater and the equal. You you have to make the distinction. You have to make the separation between the conditions. Those are the conditions, and those gives the state of AC. هذا اللي كان الحالة تاع الاي سي وهذا اللي كونديسيون فيريفي هذا اللي نقولوا صح هذا اللي نقولوا غادي تاكو اوكي ليتس كونتينيو وي هاف ذيس وان ذيس وان از ذا سيكس ذا سيكس هاف سيكس لايك ذيس وي هاف تو تراي ايتش بوسيبيتيز اف يو هاف ذيس وات از ذا ستيت اوف اي سي Uh, equal a positive number. It is a positive number. Very good. This positive number and the condition is false. False. Because it's not less, it's not equal. If we put this, for instance, uh, negative ne number. Negative. The, condi the condition is true. Less is, uh, less is past. Okay, if I put this, AC equals zero. Zero, very good. Then this part is passed, and the you have you have the or here. I can't figure out why. The two are in the middle. I'm trying to figure out why they're not moving. I'm not trying to figure out why they're not moving. I'm trying to figure out why they're not moving. Yes, uh, continue, please. Oh, the the last. Okay, we finished. We actually finished. We tested all the possibilities. Uh, what are the possibilities? We tested all the possibilities. We have uh, last one. Always, always. Uh, it's a uh, it's a jump. Always, we call that a jump. A jump means that. 
The gem means that all uh, whatever the results of uh, C and AC, we have always uh, we have always uh, the condition true. Uh, and you have uh, you have to understand that we have only three possibilities for uh, C and IC and uh, by C. We have three possibilities. We have uh, zero zero. We have uh, zero one. 1, 0, but never 1, 1. 1, 1 is, is an impossible case. This is an impossible case. That means that at the same time, I see is equal to 0, and it is negative. It is impossible, logically. Logically, it is impossible to get negative and 0 at the same time. It is impossible. This is why this, uh, this situation is impossible. It's, uh, Impossible. We have only three situations. We have a zero zero means that the value is positive. We have a zero one means the value is negative, and we have one zero means that the value is equal to zero. We have a three possibilities, and if we put one 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 here, that means we are not doing a branch. We are doing a jump. The jump means that whatever the condition, whatever the condition, the condition is not important, it's not taken in account. Into account. Into account. Okay. We finished, we have, uh, we have the last one. The last one is this. Do you have questions before I continue? No, no questions. Uh, yes, it's, it's uh, somehow some, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a pretty difficult, but you can understand it. We have the last uh, situation. It's, it's a, a special situation. This one with, with the star. Never. Never is a special case. It's a special case to use what we call a far jump. What is a far jump? We have a near jump and we have a far jump. The far jump is a, when you take a jump that is beyond the page if you have you have to remember that we saw that the last time we have the pc if you remember the pc we have the low part and we have the high part we have the eight bits here and we have eight bits here this is the pc and uh, we talked about that we said that the pc will divide the memory on pages on pages on many pages and we explained that we call that the segmentation. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, we talked about the segmentation and we said that each page or segment, each page, we call that the page. Each page has uh, 256 cell or, uh, or byte, or bytes each one, and we have in total, in total, to uh, 56 page. pages. Pages. Okay, now we have uh, two, if you remember, uh, the PC has uh, two ways uh, to be uh, uh, two ways to be modified the PC the PC is divided on two parts we have the low part and we have the high part we have the high part the low part should be changed with, the, with this bus and the high part should be changed with Y with the register Y the Y can change it the high part and the, the data bus should change the low part. If you remember well, the low part represents what? 
and the hay part represent what? Also the address of the instruction. Can you give me the high? What is high represent exactly in the uh, address of an instruction? The high represent? Represent uh, the address of the segment. Very good. Page. Of the page. And the low part represents? Uh, represent uh, the address inside uh, one uh, one segment. Very good, very very good. This is exactly the idea. And here, all the instructions we did here, all of those seven condition are a branch inside the one segment. Inside one segment. If this condition is correct. We will jump inside the one segment. We can jump only inside one segment. Why? Because we will modify only this part. Only this part. Only the data bus part, the low part. Do you understand that? This is. Yes? Hey! هذوك في كونديسيون سبع درسنا هنا عندك غير في كونديسيون هذوك تقدر تصوتي غير داخل لاباج برك ما تقدرش تخرج على لاباج سمع في السيجمو هذيك في السيجمو تقدر تقولي فيه غير داخل السيجمو تعلمو فقط يو كان اونلي تشينج ذا لو بارت اوف ذا ادريس اون ذا اوذر هاند اون ذا اوذر هاند تو تشينج The high part, we should uh, use what we call a far jump. This is what we call a far jump. It's not a condition. It's not conditional. You have to understand that. It's a jump. It's not a conditional, and it is represented by uh, by this by never. It is represented by never. Normally, never. If we follow the table, we will never jump. Never, we will never jump. But the CU was modified to use it like the far jump. The far jump is the only time when we will change the high part. Exactly the high and the low at the same time. We will change 16 bits, not 8 bits. We will change the high and the low at the same time with the far jump. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes. If we choose the far jump means that uh, we put a three zero well in the condition base. If we put three zero that means far jump. If the instruction of PCC is a far jump That means that we will change the low and the high part of the PC. Of the PC. The, that means that while we override the value of high, and the data bus will override the low part of the PC. And now we will change the page and the location inside the page. With this instruction, we can. Now jump to a different page with an address different inside the page with this far jump. This far jump was detected with this decoder. This decoder is the decoder that can detect if we have a far jump or not. This is special. This, it is especially used to detect the far jump. You can read here. If it's a zero, 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 it will put one. We will use this decoder if, uh, for instance, we have a zero here, zero here, zero here, three zero in uh, the three bits. This decoder will output a one here. That's right. That's right. Or we put zero, zero, zero. I get one here. This decoder, uh, this decoder, 
is used to detect if we have three zeros. This is the only this only job. This, this is very simple. This is very simple. Uh, we could even change this uh, decoder by uh, by NOR gates. This is the equivalent of NOR gates. If you see the, that, this is the equivalent of a NOR gate. But in this situation, we followed exactly what uh, Gigatron did. Gigatron uh, didn't choose to use the NOR gate. The NOR gate did the same. I, I will approve, uh, prove it to you briefly. We have, for instance, a NOR gate. If we have a NOR gate and we have a three input, have a three input, if we put the three input at one, uh, at, uh, at zero, sorry, we have this one, this one, and this one. This port will produce one. This end gate is equivalent to this decoder. I don't know. Uh, it's a, yes, yes, I know. This is uh, simpler for the, the construction in the using ICs. It's simpler to use the decoder uh, than uh, NOR gates. NOR gates uh, would be more difficult. Uh, the decoder is, it would be more simple. The decoder is small, uh, uh, was small, and it was perfect for this job. You have to understand that this decoder is very simple to use. This is the equivalent of NOR gate. A NOR gate can detect if you have three zeros. If you have three zeros, it will put a one. Or else, if uh, it's different, if it's different, means uh, this condition, this condition, it will output the value of one. It will output the value of one. Uh, how it, uh, it was used? It was used clearly by choosing the, the zero output. If we put zero, zero here, this is the zero output, this is the one output, this is the two output, and this is the three outputs. We need to put those to zero. If we have zero, zero here, we choose the first one. We choose the first one, but we need to activate it. To activate it, the first bit should be zero and inverted. This, uh, this uh, not gate is used to activate this decoder only if it's there. If it's there. That means if we have a zero here, zero here, zero here, this is the only situation when we get one here. And this, uh, this gate, this uh, circuit is used to detect if we have a far jump. If he detects a far jump, he will output the value of far jump. I will explain that later. You have just understand that this is the mechanism to detect the far jump. You have questions? No. Okay. Now uh, we get the big picture. Have the big picture. We have this multiplexer is used to to, uh, to detect. Uh, Seven conditions, seven conditions for a near branch or jump, for a near inside the same page. And we have this one is used to detect a far jump, the far condition called never in this situation. In this situation. I have to stop here. I have to stop here. And we have to continue. It's very important. We have to continue tomorrow at the same uh, hour. We have to continue. We don't have time. We need to, uh, to, add, uh, to, to add some sessions. We will continue tomorrow this part. We will continue tomorrow this part. You have questions? No, no questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. We will continue tomorrow, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Salam. Salam.